What is going on, y'all? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com, and I'm coming back at you. This is the fourth week that we've been in contest prep mode now. Uh, last week, I went and got all my labs drawn. So you don't have to do this, but I definitely advise uh, for it because I feel like the more knowledge you have, the more data you can track, the more uh, proactive you can be with how you go about your prep, and just the more in tune you're going to be with knowing how your body responds to all the different manipulations you're making throughout the course of a prep. So a lot of things are changing. When you titrate calories down, uh, your hormones are going to be affected. Your metabolism is going to be affected. How your body's inner working on a cellular level is all going to be affected. So I like the idea of getting a full-blown blood draw lab panel done at the onset and at the conclusion of a contest prep. So I got my labs drawn last week. I just got all those results back in. I'm going to go through every single thing that I got drawn with you uh, here today. I haven't really even looked at these yet myself, so there's probably going to be some things that I don't really know what means exactly, so I'm going to have to dive deeper into it uh, at a later date. But this is basically just a high-level view, uh, me going through all my labs with you, and then anything that kind of stands out as something I should probably get checked up on uh, or dive a little deeper into, I'll do some research and we'll do like a follow-up on. But I'm going to get this done again, these same tests done again at the conclusion of the contest prep, and I'll walk th through those with you as well so you can kind of see you know, based off of these two draws, how contest prep and all the manipulations that make therein affect a uh, your your body on a cellular level, on a, on a hormonal level, because your hormones do change quite a bit. Uh, so, like the more you can know that going in and and see them change and and feel how they change, and understand why they're changing, it's just you're gonna be better set up for success in in the prep itself and in future preps and in future endeavors. So. Without further ado, let's dive into my computer. We're going to go into Heads Up Health again, which is the software I use for tracking all these metrics. So here we are in my computer, Heads Up Health. We have, uh, I've, I've done several tests. So I had this last one drawn on 1115. Um, as you can see, I've got 913. Uh, this is back in 2017 here. But I'm just going to, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to look at these. this last one compared to the 913 test. So, as we scroll down, we'll just start with this basic lipid panel here. So, we have total cholesterol. They give us a range of um, between 200 and 240, and I'm at 279. So, I'm showing to be red, so slightly elevated total cholesterol. And again, this is somewhat subjective because a lot of what the research is showing uh, from a cholesterol standpoint is... It's just it's based off of different metrics, different standards than what a lot of this conventional wisdom shows for what a healthy cholesterol level is. Um, but the cool thing about this is you pull this up and it, it kind of shows you uh, what some of the healthy metrics are, et cetera, et cetera. So let's just go down here. We got total cholesterol 279. I was 234, so I've gone up a little bit uh, since 9:13 of 2018, which when this last that's when this last test was. Uh, HDL good cholesterol. I'm at 86, so still at a very good, strong level there. Um, bad cholesterol, I'm at 177. So uh, triglycerides, basically right on par. 62 last time, 64 this time. Uh, and these these change very drastically based off of the meal you have the night before. Like Dave Feldman's done a uh, a research study, and he illustrated how you can affect your blood your blood lab numbers like very, very profoundly based off of what you eat the day before and the fat content. So I'm not really freaking out about any of these numbers. Um, so low-density lipoprotein, for whatever reason, I did not get that tested. Uh, Non-HDL cholesterol, 193. Then we have the ratios here. Uh, so the ratio for the non-HDL cholesterol is, like I said, 193. Total HDL ratio, 3.24. And trig ratio is 0.74. So main thing I'm looking for when, when it comes to cholesterol is making sure my triglycerides are down, which they are, my uh, HDL is higher, and my LDL is, you know, in a healthy range. It's, it's normal to have a slightly elevated LDL when you're eating a lot of, uh, you know, fats, saturated fats and whatnot, but I'm not really worried about it because my trigs are down low and my HDL is up solid. Um, so let's look at the blood count here. White blood cell count, red blood cell count, et cetera, et cetera. So my white blood cell count is low. Uh, they're giving us a range of between 3.8 and 10.8. I'm not sure why mine is low, 
So I am going to dive into this. If any, throughout this whole video, if any of y'all are educated on any of this stuff, know why <laughs> any of my numbers may be off, definitely, definitely comment in the in the you know comment section below because I am all ears and keen to learn. Uh, so red blood cell count is good. Hemoglobin, good. All these numbers are good. Uh, so we'll just kind of skip past most of these. I don't know what this is. Uh, I probably don't even know how to pronounce it right. Neutrophils, neotrophils, I don't know. Um, so if anybody knows about these, I'm showing red on all of these. Um, it's giving me a range of 40 to 80. I'm low, 1.5 to 7.8. This must be some kind of off number because there's no way that I would be that high above the recommended range. I don't think. So maybe this was entered incorrectly. Uh, but if any of y'all can shed some light on this, again, I'm all ears. Um, so yeah, that's what we got there. So let's look at the metabolic panel here. Uh, glucose fasting, I was at 88. Um, I don't remember what time this test was. I feel like it was pretty early in the morning, so like 9 or 8 or 9 or something like that. Um, creatinine, 1.13. See here, anything that stands out? Uh, sodium 139, so right there in a the solid range there. Potassium, all my electrolytes are good, so making sure your electrolytes are balanced is good. 4.7 there. Um, biocarbonate 26, calcium uh, 8.6 to 10.2. I'm at 10, so I'm good to go there. Uh, the globulin's good. This globulin, uh, albumin to globulin ratio is showing to be slightly elevated uh, but only by 0.1 so I'm not too worried about that either um, all these numbers look good so we got the advanced lipid panel here I select this is your small LDL particles medium LDL large HDL uh, apolipoprotein B etc etc so these are not ideal according to conventional medical wisdom what a healthy range is uh, but and maybe I'm going to be crucified for saying this, but again, I'm not really too worried about this based off of just what I know about cholesterol, what I've learned in the research, especially as it pertains to keto. So I'm not really tripping here. Uh, for some reason, I didn't get these NMRs. I got this. These were all the panels that I got done with Dr. Ken Berry. Uh, so I don't have the exact same test that I got last time in 2018, but most of these numbers uh, I got the same test on. So LDL pattern. That's a zero. Again, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a zero. Maybe that was entered incorrectly. Um, let's see here. So inflammation markers. Let's look at this. C-reactive protein, 0.3. As long as you're less than three, you're good. Or long, as long as you're, let's see, low risk is less than one. High risk is greater than three. I'm at 0.3. So my inflammation is non-existent, basically. Uh, C-reactive protein, quantitative COP, did not get that one. Um, this go around, I got it last time. And then this ESR here, again, did not get that. Uh, liver function, didn't get that. Essential vitamins, vitamin D3, I'm at 95. You want it to be between 30 and 100, so I'm good and solid on vitamin D3, which is good. I do supplement vitamin D3. I take, I think, 5,000 IUs a day, if I remember correctly. Um... Vitamin B12, uh, be basically want to be above 211. I'm at 812, so good to go there. And let's see here, essential minerals, magnesium and phosphorus. Good to go on the magnesium, did not test for phosphorus. So urinalysis, I have ketones in my urine, trace ketones, and they gave me a red for that. Why? How could they do such a thing? How dare they? Um, let's see here. Protein in the urine, zero. So basically, none of this in my urine, which is good. Uh, pH is a five. I'm not sure what the recommended. I wonder if this tells me. Uh, range is 180 to 200. So I'm a five. I don't know what that means. I don't know what I just did. Um, let's see here. Diabetes screening and management. Hemoglobin A1C. I am at no risk there. Insulin, 1.9, at no risk there. C-peptide, 0.43. Estimated average glucose calculated. Did not get that tested. Uh, so thyroid function, all of these are in the green. No issues there. 
this is kind of where I want to focus on the hormones here. So DHEA did not get that tested. Estradiol did not get that tested. I did get estrogen tested, and that was not listed for some reason. I don't know why that wasn't listed on here. Um, but my estrogen was slightly elevated, still within the green range, so still within the high parameter, but it was in, or the right parameter, but it was on the high end of the right parameter. So I'm a little concerned about that. I think that's likely due to just the mass amount of phytoestrogens and artificial estrogens we have in the, the, the clothes we wear, the water we drink, the toothpaste that we use. So I'm going to be more proactive about trying to avoid any artificial estrogens and phytoestrogens to get that estrogen number down. Free testosterone, uh, you want to be here. It looks like uh, it didn't give me... Let's see here. Low risk is 8.7 to 25. I'm at 113, which is saying is too high. Uh, sex hormone binding globulin. I uh, You want to be... Uh, less you want to be less than 50, I believe. I, I did some research on this one, so you want to be less than 50. I think the range is between 30 and 50. I'm at 69. So basically what this means from what I've been able to read up on is if you have elevated sex hormone binding globulin, that means your, your testosterone binds to that basically, and it's less... The, what is bound to the binding globulin is not you know, taken in by the body and used as it should be. So basically, if my sex hormone binding globulin is high and elevated, which it is, that's less testosterone that my body can use and make use of. So I need to, and that in turn decreases my positive testosterone ratio. Uh, so basically, I need to find a way to decrease my sex hormone binding globulin so that I'm uptaking more testosterone in my body. My total testosterone serum is is good and solid. I'm at 718. I was 712 in 2018. So that's a good number. But the healthy ratio is kind of skewed by this elevated sex hormone binding globulin and by the slightly elevated estrogen, which again is not on here, but I did get that tested. And it was, I think like 15 or it was at the upper end of what the healthy range is. Uh, so I'm going to try and decrease estrogen, decrease sex hormone binding globulin, and that's going to improve my testosterone ratio. And I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that. I'm going to take some. I'm going to supplement with some boron. I'm going to make sure I'm not taking any uh, unnecessary artificial estrogens and phytoestrogens. But that's basically what we're looking like from that standpoint. I am keen to see how this number is affected at the end of the prep because it's totally normal and expected to see a decrease in testosterone by the end of the prep. But I'm curious to see how much that decrease entails. Um, Uric acid, that's showing to be red. Not sure why. Um, amino acid did not get it tested. That basically is all the tests here that I have access to. So that is what we're working with. Again, this is just kind of a, an overview. I haven't dove deep into any of these that are red other than those hormonal uh, you know, panels. But like I said, I'm going to work on that. We'll, we'll kind of work on seeing how we can affect this. Uh, how we can improve on it as best we can naturally and through diet. And then at the end of all this, we're going to test again at the end of the contest prep and see how the prep itself, through a reduction in calories and just the training and all the rigors that a prep entails, how that impacts these numbers. So stay tuned. Hope you learned something. Again, if you know something here that I didn't mention, failed to mention, or don't know, by all means, message me in the comment section or shoot me an email so that I can become educated. But until then, take care, have a good one, and I'll talk to you soon.